Hello creators, welcome to the special 5,000 YouTube subscriber video. Thank you so much for helping me get here. I am just blown away by all of your support. Be sure you head over to mcreations.com and click on the specials link so that you can enter into my second giveaway for one of these adorable Stampin' Up! reusable tote bags to say thank you so much for all of your support. I'm taking my inspiration from Artisan Design team member Emma Goddard for this card today. I'm using the Honey Bee Bundle and Petal Pink. I'm going to start by taking the Golden Honey Designer Series paper and with four different inking techniques, I'm going to ink up this gold and white piece. First, I'm going to try the sponge brayer and I really like the definition and the different textures that the sponge brayer offers. The next technique I am doing is direct to paper, which I am using the ink pad and just scraping it along the paper. You want to make sure you have extra re-inkers just in case you get a little heavy handed on this technique. The third technique is just to sponge daub, do a couple of splotches of very dark and some light in between. And I just did that all over this paper. I really liked this look. It was very uh, kind of cloudy, I thought, and I just really liked the way that it turned out. And finally, the last technique I wanted to use was the watercolor. So I just took some ink and it would be great if you had a re-inker in this color, then you could just squeeze a couple drops onto the lid instead of squeezing the pad itself. But this was a very faint and subtle way to get color onto this paper. And you definitely want to make sure that you let this dry before you put it onto your project. Here are all four of them side by side so that you can kind of see the differences between them. I ended up using the direct to paper on the cards that I'm going to be showing you in this video. However, I am making a load of these cards so that I can send them out as customer thank yous this month. I'm not sure if this cutting technique has an actual name, so I'm calling it the geometric cut technique. So I will be slowing this down in a minute so you can kind of see what I'm doing, but it took me a few tries to make sure that I could have a pretty clear definition of how to cut these so that they were all the same size across the three different pieces that you're going to need. I have my designer series paper, I have some gold foil, and then I also have my basic gray. Now in order to get this cut the way you need, I took the upper right corner of a piece of four by five and a quarter inch DSP and the lower left corner and line those up with the one inch and three inch marks on my trimmer. And then I took the remaining piece and I lined up the left corner and the lower right corner. It's kind of hard to describe, but I hope that you can see how I'm doing it in the video here. It's a good idea to use your previous piece that you've cut. Once you've cut the first piece into three sections, you can use that as your template to cut your other pieces like you see I'm doing right here with the gray piece, putting that gold on top to make sure that I have it lined up exactly where I need it to cut. That's the easiest way to cut all three of your papers so that they match up. I am using Thick Whisper White as my card base and the first step I am going to score it at the four and a quarter mark with the short edge at the top. That way when I cut these at the five and a half inch mark with the long edge at the top, I will have my cards already scored and I won't have to score them again. This is a tip that I got from one of my subscribers in a video a little while ago, so thank you so much if you are the one that gave me that tip. Mm -hmm. 
I'm prepping a standard piece of Whisper White cardstock so that I can heat emboss it. So I just rubbed my embossing buddy and now I'm going to use Versamark ink to stamp a few of these honey be hives down and then I'm going to heat emboss them with our gold stamp and emboss powders. Using the petal pink ink, I'm going to stamp some of the large bees as well as the flowers. I'm also going to take my sponge dauber and lightly sponge a background to stamp my small bees onto in Versamark ink. And I'm going to heat emboss those with clear embossing powder. As soon as I have all of those smaller bees heat embossed in the clear, I'm going to take some more of that petal pink ink on a sponge dauber and I'm really going to emphasize those bees with the emboss resist technique. The ink won't stain the embossing so it'll make those bees pop out a little bit more on that background. After I get my other pieces stamped in the petal pink, I'm going to run all of my pieces through the Big Shot and get everything cut out and ready to put onto my cards. I am going to use a lot of different adhesives. The first one I'm using are some Stampin' Dimensionals, and I'm going to be putting those onto the back piece of each of my geometric cut background cardstock pieces. And you don't have to pop these up. I just really love things that have dimension, and I thought this added a little extra touch, but you could certainly use the snail adhesive to get these onto your page if you don't want to use all of these dimensionals. I just so happen to have a huge sheet left over from when I was a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, and I wanted to get them used up. You want to make sure that you are alternating your pieces of cardstock. You can see I have one piece of pink, gray, and gold on each card, and that's why it is so important to get them cut the exact same size so that they line up well when you go to glue them down. I did cut my pieces four by five and a quarter, but I would recommend cutting them at four by five instead. So you have a little bit more space between the angled cuts in the middle of the card. After gluing everything down, I am going to heat emboss in white my sentiment, which is thank you, onto a scrap of basic gray cardstock. I'm going to cut this apart with some scissors and then put it onto my honey bee hives as the sentiment. I love how this gray really pops against that gold. I do have some of the metallic thread in the rose gold behind my honey bee hives, and I'm going to use the champagne rhinestones for my bling bling, and I'm going to put those around the cluster of the bees, the flowers, and the hive. And there we are creators, that is our project today inspired by the lovely, talented Emma Goddard. I really hope that you go down into the description box below and click on my coordinating blog post link to check out my project as well as her links. You can follow me online at mcreations.com and also on social media at mcreations. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!